Okay, say what you said before. Um, rule number one of vinyl wrapping is you have to make sure that your spot that you're going to be wrapping is clean. If you have water in it, water will eat away at the adhesive and then it won't stick, which will result in it just being popped up in certain corners, um, as well as making sure you decontaminate it, whether that's clay bar. Or, for smaller pieces, just making sure that you, uh, alcohol it. Uh, yeah. Alcohol. Yeah. Just make a nice clean little surface area, get all the dead bugs out of it. Save them for later. What material is that? This is a 3M roll, but the odd part about it is I noticed that it is... I don't know, marking? 3M scotch marking? It's, it doesn't look like the regular uh, air release 3M material that I'm used to, so you don't see any of the lines in it. So I am worried that this is just sticker material, so I don't think this will work. But we'll try. I'm curious. Otherwise, I have this material. So I'm going to test the material. See if it is malleable at all, or has any uh, air release capabilities. God, this is terrible. I bought this off Amazon. Don't buy your shit from Amazon. I feel like I could already tell that this is not going to be a, a good quality. Ow. Well, it looks like it has surprisingly air release. No, psych, it does not lies. So this this wouldn't really work for me. Like it it would be fine really realistically for a small little piece like this. But if I wanted to do the door handles, which is the plan, uh these one are not gonna be big enough and two. I don't know how well this would really work. Yeah, you could see like little little air pockets. But normally, if you had air release, you'd be able to push it all out, but this is a no-go. What are you doing now? Right now, I'm pre-stretching the material to uh, make sure that it kind of, when I, uh, after I wrap a piece and then I give it some heat, it actually kind of shrinks in around this corner. So, let's see if I could demonstrate this. I don't know how well you could see. But you see how it just kind of sucked in on itself right there? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. That way you don't have any fingers. No spots. Can I have a little bit? I mean, this isn't terrible. It could work. So I said I have to resort to Vivid. I have, I have satin, but I don't have gloss in 3M, sadly. Big sad. But this has air release. I don't know if you could see it, but there's like the little, little triangle hexagon fucking thick looking things. Okay. I'm gonna try the same thing. This is turning into a test product. So Vivid really likes heat. So let's see how this is going to work. It's definitely a lot glossier than that 3M sticker material thing that they that they gave me. Vivid also has terrible air release properties, in my opinion. Okay. Same thing. Wrap that little corner. You want to move all of your fingers away from the corners 
and into other areas where it will have tension. Yeah, it looks like this is what I'll be using then. nothing around. I, on an occasion, like to spray just a tad bit of wax, just so I don't have any adhesive lines, because I absolutely hate adhesive lines, even on small little pieces. So I literally just put the smallest amount, and then I'll just spread it out on the surface, so that it's nice and smooth. Come on. I have a theory. Remember how we were talking about how what if vinyl fog is how uh, vivid is wrapped? I need to know if this is pre-stretched. No, not really. I'm going to tack it in the center, just like that, and then I'm going to heat this corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull outwards on this edge to wrap around the corner at the same time as I'm pulling, and just lift. Squeegee all this out. Okay. Then I do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I'll lift this up a little bit just so that I can get maximum coverage as much as I can. I'll peel back a little bit and heat so that it shrinks. And I'll start moving the material away from this corner. Must be handy to have nails instead of a squeegee. Yeah, it's a proper investment. I think all vinyl wrappers should have nails. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. CK wraps needs nails. Okay. This is with a pick. Same 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 thing. Same thing as what a nail would do. Basically what I'm doing is I'm moving away all the fingers that are in this point, I'm bringing them all back in here into the center where we initially tacked. So, repeat again. And a good technique to have is to keep the material from sticking to this, to any surface area that's behind it. Because if you, if it's stuck and you're trying to push down on it, you have tension and it's not, whatever you're pushing down here is not gonna properly fall in there. You want to make sure that when you reheat something, you lift it, heat it, and make sure to keep it off, off of whatever is behind it. Okay. And you see now it falls in better. 
You want to make sure you try not to force the material to do something that it does not want to. The more that it naturally falls into place, the better and long lasting your vinyl wrap will stay. Or, yeah. Okay, right now I'm going to relief cut it a little bit. Can you see at all? Yeah. Okay. You don't have to look at the camera either. Because I'm like zoomed in a lot. Yeah, I figured so. Okay. So, same thing on this side. Heat, start shrinking it on itself, and bring the material out. I'm also not applying a ton of pressure into these corners, just a little bit, little by little, I'm moving the fingers are out. Because um, if you push too hard, you could also puncture the, the vinyl wrap, and you don't want to do that. And also, the way that I move the material has kind of a system to it, essentially. So with every peak, every corner, like I was saying, do your corners first. I will also push out the material from the corners into your recessed areas. So same thing here. What I did is I pushed this out and then pushed this corner in because you want to feed the material essentially into this groove. Because if you don't, then obviously it'll it'll pucker up because it wants to. Uh, the memory will want to come back unless you proceed, obviously. Really hard being pretty and efficient. Okay. I'm gonna do the what? Gotta fix your hair. Honestly, just gotta have your hair tied. But Anyways, I'm gonna do the same thing on this bottom side where I'm gonna, I'm scooping the fingers from this point inwards. And I'm applying the same technique where I'm lifting up the material from sticking behind um, and just making sure that it's all fed in. It's not under any pressure at all. When I heat it, when I heat it right before I do all of that, what that does is that kind of relaxes the material back to its original form, and it also kind of wants to wrap around easier as well.
What are you doing now? Right now I am relief cutting. So I see how it's kind of puckering up in these little, these little corners. So what I do is I just relief cut it a little bit so that the material can relax. And not pull back as much as it kind of has been. There you go. Voila. Okay, now I'm going to start trimming. I'm going to have to get really close. So I'll heat it up for the one, one more time. Have to snap your blade. We want that fresh blade. And then in here you'll see there is a, there's a line where the chrome ends essentially. So I don't know if you could see it at all, but so, oh, I guess you could show it right here. So this is where the chrome ends. This is where the plastic begins. You want to cut right bet pretty much in between that and just follow along everywhere. That way it hides the chrome completely. So let's see. So find a spot. And I'll pretty much put my blade right against that edge. I think you're a heart surgeon in your other life. Probably. <laughs> okay. There you go. I like to do a little little first test piece just to make sure that I'm right about where my where I'm cutting. So as you can see, perfectly fine. And I continue on everywhere else. Um, if it's hard for you to see where your line is, sometimes I'll grab my pick and I'll kind of poke around at it, see where it continues. So as you can see, it'll kind of start going up, so it'll catch some somewhat that chrome. So it's following all this line right out here. Oops. On your corners like this, it's really hard to see where your actual, where the chrome actually ends. So I'll do an approximate cut, which is like essentially guessing. And for the most part, it covers enough. Sometimes it might be a little bit longer. Let's see. Give it a little bit of heat. It looks like it's still wanting to come up, so I'll lift it up and then I'll do the same little squeegeeing technique just to bring all the material from out underneath there. Okay. On the bottom ones, I usually do an a, gu a guessing cut essentially. So I'll get right in there, and I'll push my blade against the chrome. And when I say that, what I mean is a good way of showing you. You're not necessarily flat, but what you're doing rather is you kind of kick your little your blade out a little bit. And what that does is it, it runs this back edge against the chrome and just glides. Instead of going flat against it, which could potentially cut right into the chrome, you you like tilt it a little bit and it just runs right across. Gives you a, a straight line too.
like we add a little bit extra. If only we didn't have a motor laying around on the ground. Maybe I could uh, move closer. BMW things. fix the truck I can get the engine hoist from the storage unit. Oh yeah. <clears throat> that wouldn't be a terrible idea. So I'm doing a little little guide, so to say, just to see where uh, where the line is. It's kind of just just helps me see it just in case. Feeling is one thing, but seeing is believing. You want to make sure that your cut covers just enough. Otherwise, you don't want to redo the whole piece. And I just hit it with a little bit of heat anywhere, just to make sure everything's in place. There's some rock chips right here. There you have it. And make oh, yeah. sure to post heat too. You want to make sure all your grooves and corners and edges. You want to push them all down, give them a good amount of heat. Explain post heating briefly. Post heating basically is uh, when you give enough heat uh, to the vinyl, and the vinyl has a certain memory to it, and so with the heat, the heat will kill, God, anyways, the heat will kill the memory, uh, I think it was like 195 Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly, I don't remember this, the number is off the top of my head, but a certain degree, uh, and this, this is based off every vinyl, every vinyl will be different, um, all of them will have a certain, uh, Fahrenheit temperature, uh, uh, of heat that you'll need to use in order to kill that memory, and so, in this case, I use, I've gotten so used to it where it's like I can feel with my touch how much uh, how much heat is needed, and uh, yeah, that's the gist of really close heating. Now, now do it again in here. Yay! Well, we'll 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 cut the video there, but yeah, got another one, and then we'll do handles. Yep. <laughs>